tasting room, but it's not a restaurant. You're not competing with restaurant as, as such, but it's a, a high-end degustation type structure. For what reason? Um, we um, we do a lot of events. You know, as you've said, we, we do weddings, we do uh, social events, we do corporate events. A lot of our events uh, we offer are food tasting. So that's one one part where we can bring people in and show. You know, when you bring your thousand people or your, your 50 people in, this is the menu and this is what it looks like, this is what it tastes like, and, and you'll see it. And we, we also host people for events here, and we, um, we like to be able to host them you know, in a lovely room and give them some of our food service and, and quality. It's a working room, basically everything in this building uh, can do lots and lots of things. So the idea is to have a terribly dark day in the building and you can, you can just keep pumping business into the city. When Brisbane Live starts over Roma Street Way, what, what's that going to mean for the, for the city, for the convention centre, uh, for sort of the atmosphere of the place? What's it going to be for Canada? What is it? It's, uh, it's got an amazing opportunity for the city, you know, to have something, uh, something like a brand new facility such as that, you know, holding that number of people in an area where tra transport is just spectacular. You know, Suncorp Stadium, you know, is, is amazing for getting people in and out. You know, you can sit there and people just appear, you know, like half an hour before the, uh, the game starts and they get out and they either go into the city and uh, spend money in restaurants and pubs and things there. Uh, Brisbane Live has got the same opportunity with uh, transport links. With regard to our building, um, we're not in the same sort of market. We, uh, you know, we're limited to about 4,000 people for, for concerts and we do a great job at that. Uh, but what basically happens is if you're above you know, 4,000 people, you need to go to a different venue, like the Entertainment Centre or, or Brisbane Live, you're up to uh, you know, 10 to 12,000 people. So I think it's, it's just, I think the way things are going at the moment, Brisbane is really moving in a great direction. You know, we've got Mount Smith Wharf open, you know, uh, sort of late towards the end of the year. The Star's going to open, we've had the W and Avatel next to us. Uh, the Emporium has opened up. There's, there's just lots and lots of infrastructure being built, and I think Brisbane Live and all the other things that are happening in Brisbane. For us, it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, we, we were fairly well known in on the national market. We compete really, really hard. But Brisbane will start getting more and more known internationally, and that will give us more business as well. So we'll, you know, we'll, we're, we're kicking really well. We're, we're having the best year So, um, at a time where $4 million have been spent on convention infrastructure competition. So, um, so, Brisbane is really doing well. General Manager of the Brisbane Convention and Exhibition Centre. Prior to that, David Pugh, Executive Chef. The man who walked us through the tasting or something which I've never heard before. This is ABC Radio Brisbane. It's 25 minutes past four. last night at Greenbank uh, because the inland rail project, which is a rail line basically cutting across Australia from Melbourne to Brisbane, well, meeting uh, last night, uh, and it's starting to dawn on locals what the impact may be in those suburbs of Alchester and Greenbank and Parkinson and the Flagstone and that's coming up in about half an hour from now. We're also expecting to be speaking energy for you from the north side of the just finding out what's happening.
actually plays semi-professionally for Melbourne's Pasco Vale football. Turned out the football was the year before. Soccer right now is the best contact for Craig Foster. Champion of the game. Obviously, you can see it's long running, but very comfortable. A very courageous young man, a human rights defender who we're so proud of all of Australia. Queensland floods. Millioid 
Acidosis is an environmental bacteria linked to contaminated soil and water. Health authorities say there have been 10 confirmed cases with one fatality a couple of days ago. A watch and act has been issued for a large bushfire at Wallangarra near the Queensland New South Wales border. The fast moving blaze is burning near Palin Yard Road into the Kirrawee National Park. Ousted LNP member Jason Costigan is facing more claims of harassment. Shadow Attorney General Jared Blay has used parliamentary privilege to outline four more allegations against the Whitsunday MP who was expelled from the party last month. As we've heard, refugee footballer Hakeem Alarabi has been given a hero's welcome at Melbourne Airport, having spent about three months in a Thai jail. The 25-year-old was arrested on his honeymoon at the request of his home country, Bahrain, where he'd been accused of being a dissident. An extradition request was dropped yesterday amid mounting international pressure. More news at five. ABC Radio Traffic. Expressway, but it's been coping quite well with a few instances around. We did have an early crash on the Pacific Motorway outbound through Wallingham, and uh, that created a lot of delay for uh, outbound. It's still quite busy for outbound, it's been inbound now. Got a broken down for the drive, you have to switch inbound lane to Mark to Stanley Street, so that delay is really starting to thicken up. And G Bug lines around at Robinson Road and Murphy Road had an early crash at Beatley, a single visual Logan Street and Bound Street, one lane open in both directions in that area. Also, the gateway northbound. Motorway has been slow from Robert Lee to Oxley. The Western Freeway on the brakes from Mount Coot to the Victory and Pogan has been uh, generally heavy on the gateway southbound as well from Belmont to the M1 and the M1 from Mobile Plains through Rochdale South. Coronation Drive delays inbound from Walker Cloud and North Quay. And Milton Road has been a really slow start this afternoon. The Queen's Mountains from the Right to the Biscuit Street and to Hill. And a slow run on Port Hill Street northbound from Fraser's Road. It's starting to ease in spots so right through to Sanford Road and the Milton Road. And uh, general peak conditions, as I mentioned there. Australian Traffic Network. I'm Brad. More details at 5 on ABC Radio Brisbane. Brad, thank you very much. 26 minutes to 5. You mentioned the traffic lights out at Zilmere, and I mentioned that the powerhouse is on the north side of Brisbane are, are quite significant. Um, Holly Lister is from Genetex. Holly, what's happening? Ask for your G-Bug at Zilmere. What's happening? Hi there. Yes, we currently have just shy 1,500 customers in that power.
Beach Boys in my room. The, tr the album chosen by my producer Josh, or one of my producers Josh, and the lot of records we've been pulling out on vinyls, they're all old vinyl albums that the ABC had buried in a sound library that we don't want Sydney to know about. You know, sort of the ABC's head office in Sydney, and every time they find out one of the regions, that's what Sydney calls everywhere else outside of Sydney, has got something that might be worth something, they grab it and sell it. So that's what's basically happened. So Patrick Jewell, our local librarian here that does all this the archives, grabbed a whole bunch of records, stuck them in a box and said, here, start playing, playing these. So thank you to Patrick Jewell. Thank you for joining us. This is a great thing. Today, this day, Just like all we get that anniversary of when the first Today Tonight episode in QTQ Channel 9. Yes, I'm talking about my commercial competitors. Uh, of a current affairs program that has a really interesting backstory. Now, it was the beginning of, for me, a, a, a rich offering of television, local current affairs programs here in Brisbane. One of the journos who was there at the time, who may have even done the first story, the first night, the first program, was a chap by the name of Jim Left the ABC and went to QDQ9 and other 
other commercial networks because of this ABC decision? Yeah, but basically there, there was a gang, a gang of four, if you like, um, Des Power, who was at that stage was uh, the executive producer of TDT, the, the Brisbane edition. It was him, John Barton, Maxine McHugh and Michael Beattie, and they had a nasty habit of going across the road to the regatta at the end of the program and having a few beers where they obviously, you know, had a thought and think about it and said, well, this isn't going to work, this whole idea of moving to 930s is not going to work for us. So they took the proposal to take TDT as it was up the hill to Q to Q9 and Hugh Cornish. Now, this is the most remarkable thing about the gamble. Even though Q to Q9 at that stage was not owned by Kerry Packer, it wasn't actually officially part of the network, it was affiliated. And as an affiliate, it was part...